All right, thank you guys so much for joining us. Again, this is the Essays panel. My name is Catherine Morris with Louisiana Tech University, and I will be moderating this panel for you guys with four of my uh, wonderful colleagues, which will introduce themselves in just a second. Um, if you do have any specific questions, we will go over some predetermined questions. Uh, but if you do have any specific questions, feel free to message those to me and we can get those answered at the end um, of our panel discussion today. Uh, just as a reminder, please keep yourselves on mute and also your video on mute as well. Um, and we will go ahead and get started. Um, if let's go in in alpha order. Uh, so uh, Miss Beverly, would you mind introducing yourself first? Sure. I am Beverly Henry Wheeler with Hendrix College and we're located in Conway, Arkansas. Welcome. Uh, I'm Brad Derside with Trinity University in San Antonio. Glad you all are here. Garrett, loving the Tom and Jerry picture. Hi, guys. I'm Allie Landis, and I am a regional representative for the University of Tulsa, located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl Landorf. I work for Purdue University. We are located in West Lafayette, Indiana. Thanks for coming today. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so our first question for our panelists is going to be, what are some components of a good college essay? Thanks, Catherine. I'm going to go ahead and start us off with this one, um, and I will definitely let my colleagues jump in, and I think we'll also um, answer this question as we go throughout. Um, but I think some basics, just to kick us off for a good college essay, is going to be we're going to look at the writing. We want to see that you're writing at a level that is ready for college, that there um, is flow to your essay, obviously that things are spelled right, that you're answering the prompt, I would say kind of are the basic mechanics. And I think for me at the University of Tulsa, since we have a holistic admission process, meaning we're looking at all of the components to make a decision, the essay is really where you have an opportunity to tell me about um, the things that I don't already have. I already know, um, I already can see your transcript, so I know what your grades are looking like. Um, I already can see what activities you've been involved in. Um, and so up to this point, if I'm looking at several students' applications, um, they can look pretty similar because just the reality is you have similar activities, generally speaking, available to you at school. Maybe you're in a sport or you play in the band or you're in NHS or maybe you do some community service. Um, and so it can look pretty similar up to that point. And so for me, I would say that essay is really um, an opportunity for me to get to know you and for you um, to show me a part of yourself that isn't already in the application. Um, yeah, just to know who you are. And so I would say a good college essay is going to be one where I feel like I come away knowing the student better and trying seeing if they would be a good fit for my institution, knowing what they would bring. And then also an essay that shows me that they are prepared to enter college and are writing. Um, obviously, you're not in college. So I don't expect you to be writing at a college level, but that you are prepared and that your writing shows me that. You know, I love that. And piggybacking on that, what I would say is, if you look at the prompts of all the, uh, for Common Application Applied Texas Coalition, the common phrase and common word is you or, or your. So it, it's us getting an insight into you. And it's not so much of having the best grade in English means you're going to write the best college essay, right? So this is an exercise that is different than anything you've done in high school before. If it's a history paper or something like that, you're citing sources, right? But this is truly 650 words on the common application to you. And so taking the time to really think of what you want to tell us um, and showing us the things, not just telling us, don't uh, tell me that you love sports, show me the one game that really meant something to you. Uh, don't tell me the relationship you have kind of with parents and what they meant. Show me that example of something that they brought to you. Uh, I would also I would never tell someone what they can or can't write about. Right. I had a student uh, right when COVID hit over spring break and we got to know each other quite well. And she had the sibling rivalry with her sister. And I said, how's it going? And she paused. She goes, you know what, Mr. Dershai, 
I really like my younger sister. And we started laughing. I was like, that would have been a great college essay. I'm not saying you have to write about that, but write something that's unique and special to you that, that, that um, we can learn more about you. Awesome, thank you guys so much. That was so helpful. All right, we're gonna move on to our next question. Um, so how can an essay make my application stand out? I'll take this one, Catherine. Um, so Brad and Allie really just said it, but the thing that I wanna make clear, or the picture I wanna paint is most of the items and most of the things you're gonna be sharing with us on your application are facts, okay? They're historical things that already happened, things that at this point you really don't have any control over. So the essay is the opportunity for you to tell us your story and about you. Um, it's really important to tell us something different about you that isn't already in some other part of the application. Um, there's a lot of times the essay can be a place to tell us about a different situation or something that makes you unique. Um, Ellie talked about, you know, looking at the essay to figure out if you're going to be a good fit for our universities, and that's truly what we're doing. So this is your moment to shine and tell us what you think we need to, you know, tell us not what you think we want to hear, but tell us about you and what you want us to know about you. Um, that's the really important part, and that's how it's going to make your application stand out. Um, I've done lots of application or essay workshops where students think, well, I'm not that unique, or I don't have anything really to say that's different. You do. Trust us. Just be yourself and tell us about you, however you want to do that, in the essay, and it's going to make a difference. Thanks, Cheryl. Alrighty, so our next question is, what role does the essay play in the admissions process at your specific institution? Yeah, that's a really good question, important one when you start thinking about this process, right? And, and Allie touched on this, that I think most of the schools here take a holistic approach, right? So we're looking at every component of your application. And so it's beyond GPA and test scores if you have them. We'll talk a little bit about test optional in a second. But the way the admissions committee works, and I think most of us have the admissions committee where I read your application and I present it to the admissions committee, much like this. And so the more information we can know about you, the more of an advocate we get to be for you in this admissions committee, right? So to Ali's point earlier, it's diving deeper into something that's already in the application or something new that we didn't know about, right? There's a student a couple of years ago, uh, no runner application did she list that she sold Cutco knives, like the knives. And she wrote about that and she ended up on a dare and she's like the number two salesperson in Texas just on a dare because of a friend's mom at a family dinner. And how awesome, how unique, right? So when you're talking about the, the admissions committee and you're reviewing it, that's something that's unique and special that kind of to Cheryl's point that that's something that she wouldn't brag about, but it's such a unique and special story. So when we're reviewing the essay, we're seeing like Ali talked about earlier, your, your quality of writing, right? Are, are you ready for our institution writing style? And then the, the story you're telling too. But I talked a little bit about that test optional. So, you know, with the schools you're looking at, see what component the um, test optional policy has. But if we're taking away that test score component, now we're putting more emphasis on these other elements, the uh, application, the essay, GPA, things like that. The other thing I want to touch on is the supplemental essay. So Trinity doesn't have one. And I think my, my colleague here, we don't have one. So those will tell you a little bit about the university. So there's the generic one of why blank university, right? Why Trinity University? Why whatever university? Okay, so you have about 250 words and getting a little more specific. There should be some experience that, that attracts you to that university, right? That's not the one to uh, word search and take out Trinity University and add Texas A&M, right? There should be something special about that school. I think it's Wake Forest. Their supplemental essay is give us your top 10, just anything. That tells you a little bit about the university too. It's very creative and kind of thinking where you would go. I would always think what I would answer. I think probably barbecue, top, maybe it's around lunchtime. That's why I go to that, the top 10 barbecue places. Um, but think about that supplemental. So that's another, probably a little more weight on that for the schools that have that. Uh, of, um, did you answer that prompt as well? Awesome, thank you guys so much. So we've kind of talked a lot about content and what makes a good essay. So kind of going down to the nitty gritty nitty gritty. So when you're revising and editing, what are some of the most important things to look for other than the mechanics? Yeah, so I think we've definitely touched on this. Um, but I, 
gosh. Okay. I'm getting into the question, but also I'm thinking of things I forgot. So I'm also going to insert these right here. If my fellow panelists don't mind. And something that I really like to remind students for my institution, I can't speak for everyone. I read all of my students essays. And so sometimes I think I know, um, that students assume it's like an English professor or someone like that reading their essay. And for me, it's me. If you're my student, if you live in the Dallas area or the Austin area, then I'm the one reading your essay and I'm not an English professor. I am just a normal person. I actually studied math in school. So there you go. I went the opposite way. So I think that's something else to keep in mind. Obviously, mechanics are really important, but we've also talked about how important the content is. And I love how Brad talked about showing, not telling. And so I'm going to give y'all an example by showing, not telling. So um, I could tell you, make sure that you don't just spell check your essay, get someone to read over it. You'd be like, okay, great. You probably wouldn't remember that tomorrow, but I'm going to tell you the story and y'all will probably remember it. So my story is once we had a student who wrote an essay and in their essay, they talked about torturing seventh graders. And we were like, why would you talk about torturing seventh graders? in your essay. This is not helping you out. This does not sound like a student that is a good fit for us. We don't want a student torturing other student. Well, come to find out later, the student had meant to write tutoring seventh graders was something that they were doing, not torturing. But because they had just spell checked and they had spelled torturing right, it did not um, get highlighted and the student didn't have someone read over it. And so it went off. Luckily, we figured it out and that it was supposed to be tutoring, but that is my way of showing you that you should not just spell check. You should make sure to have someone actually read your essay and read it for the flow. Another great thing you can do is read your essay out loud. That's a great way to catch, oh, I'm missing a word there or this doesn't flow right. Um, but yeah, I think other than, me than mechanics, the other thing is when we're talking about, hey, we want to know more about you. And maybe I know someone mentioned earlier, like, ah, I'm not really unique. I don't really know. Ask your family and friends. Say, hey, if you were to describe me, like, what are the top three words that we you would use? If all of your friends say, oh my gosh, like funny, you're the wittiest person I know, then you're, you probably should figure out either how to use that way or how to write about that and give examples of that. Um, and so I think that's also a great way is just to ask the people around you who know you like, hey, what do you think is unique about me or how would you describe me? Um, and usually you'll get a theme. And so that's a great place to start. So I think I answered the question. If not, anyone else is welcome to jump in. Allie, I absolutely love your torturing tutoring example. That's a perfect one and very memorable. Um, on that same note of, you know, just trying to proof, I think the um, analyzing the essay, we're trying to figure out what else you need to proofread for, um, you know, beyond the mechanics. Um, I've often heard the example, and this is how when you're reading it out loud, or if you have another family member read it, you can say to them, if I drop this on the floor and 10 other students drop this on the floor, would you know if you picked this one up that this was me? So make sure that it tells the story of you. I can't say that enough. Um, don't get so hung up on the words or how short or how long and all the what you think we want to hear because that's not going to bring us your true self. The one other thing I, I would say, I love that advice, it is uh, it's okay to have people editing. And I'm thinking about my mom when I was back in college, she probably would have been more of a second author. That's not okay. This is your essay. Great advice, you guys. Thanks so much. Um, so what are some general tips and techniques to use when talking about yourself? Okay, I'll jump, I'll jump in and answer that. Uh, two things that I would like to, to say. First of all, I would say do a personal brand inventory. And what do I mean about brand? I mean, what are those values, those characters, those passions that you have? that you can literally, if you're having a conversation, you drop that in. And we all know Nike's brand is just do it, right? And so when we see those words, just do it, we immediately think of Nike. One of my favorite, I had to give it up because I'm vegan now, but Chick-fil-A with the cows and they would say, 
pretty much eat beef instead of eating chicken. And so a lot of times students don't realize, they don't do the inventory before they start writing their essay or even before they start talking about themselves. And I have wonderful colleagues on here today. And if I talk to each one, I'm picking on Brad today, so Brad, forgive me. But I know Brad is a wonderful father. And the reason why I know that is, is he doesn't walk around saying I'm a wonderful father. But Brad, do you still go and, and look for the uh, bobbleheads with your son? And I think you've gone to uh, several states in baseball. Am I, am I telling that story right? We do, and it's, it's, I'll, I'll share that story in a second. It, it's worse on this side of the room, just so you know. Okay, so um, I, whenever I talk to Brad, I'm interested to see, okay, where have you traveled now with your son? And out of that, I'm learning that one of his brands, I would say, is a good dad. So uh, as you're thinking about having a conversation, what are those things that are close to your heart that if people ask you, hey, what are you interested in? What do you like? Basically, they're asking, what's your brand? Right. And then the other advice that I would give is write yourself a personal note. And what in that note, what you would want to write is what advice would you give your younger self? Now that you're 18, looking back, what would you tell your younger self uh, to do differently? What would you tell your younger self to be excited about? What would you tell your younger self as far as those fears that you would have? In the same way you would give advice to yourself, when you start having conversations with admissions representative, then you begin to share those things that you would share with your younger self. So probably the main thing, and everybody has said it, is be authentic, right? I love cartoons, and if anyone in my household, my husband, um, he would tell you that I always am dragging him to see different cartoons that come out. One of my favorite ones is Kung Fu Panda. And you would say, would you talk about a cartoon with an admissions representative? I would because Kung Fu Panda 3, that's a hint, go watch it. It taught me about leadership and ultimately being yourself. And that's really what we're saying to y'all today. Find out who you are, be yourself, be able to talk about it in conversation and write about it. So that's what I would say, Catherine, to that question. Thanks so much. Anyone else have anything to add? One of my favorite all-time exercises to kind of help with this, uh, we're at one of our, our annual conferences, and it's the College Essay Guy. I think it's Ethan Sawyer, Nathan Sawyer. Anyway, the College Essay Guy has plenty of free resources and stuff you can pay for, but plenty of, of free stuff, uh, to kind of things to get creative. And his exercise was, and I highly recommend doing this with somebody, family member, friend. Uh, the idea is if you really knew me, I say something, and the person you're saying it to says, so what? And the so what's not in an accusatory way, but to give you to dig deeper. And I think we can all talk about that with the college essay, that if we can get rid of some of those words, we can get to the so what and get to you a little bit more. And so the exercise I, I shared with this complete stranger was, if you really knew me, you would know we collect bobbleheads. Well, so what? But so what? We have over 500 of these things. I thought it was 300, but we counted this weekend. It's a lot more than I thought. Um, well, so what? Well, so what? We travel all over the country collecting these things. Well, so what? Well, we have a six and eight year old, and so I like getting in the car and doing this. Well, so what? When my parents were divorced, we never really did trips that way. Ah, now I've gotten somewhere. You're going to remember me by these bobbleheads that are unique. My story itself might not be unique, but what I'm telling you is special and unique. So try that. I think it's, it's a really good way to kind of get creative with it. Thanks. Thanks, Brad. That was a great story. Um, so one thing I did think of, um, I know oftentimes in English classes, students are told, don't use a first person. What would you, what would you guys um, say as advice of, should I use first person or should I use third person? I think it's fine to use either. I think you just need to be clear that you're who you're talking about. Um, one of my biggest tips is uh, figure out a creative way to show us. Um, a lot of students struggle with the telling us versus the showing us. 
So get your thoughts down on paper or get, you know, type them out, get some thoughts down, do, you know, however you can get your thoughts about what you want to say to a college admissions representative. It's also okay to have a couple different essays. Um, you're going to start it a couple of different times, and I just had a, a phone call with um, an applicant uh, last week, and she said, you know, I have an essay finished already, um, but there's something else I really want to talk about, and she started talking to me about the different things, and this, the, the essay she doesn't have written yet was about her passion and about how she came to find out what her true passion is, and I said, you start writing that, it's everything you just told me, it's going to be amazing so you know just um just yeah just just do that just really just use your own voice and be creative however you want to be creative i think it was beverly who said um you know when you're doing your your self inventory if you're a funny kid or if you're always cracking a joke start it with a joke i always say something fun some kind of hook at the beginning is a great thing um you want us to read your story and we all do read the essays um, but you want us to be, you know, um, interested and so write it however seems like you, but still creative. Cheryl, I agree with you 100%. And I'm just going to say this out loud. I've read more boring essays because students have been trying to, to impress us or I've had a student say, well, I've not climbed Mount Everest, so I don't really have anything to write about. But like you just said, you know, if, if you have a side of you that's funny or caring, or I, I had a student and it was a simple essay, but it was really writing about how she took her younger sister to school every day. But she had learned, she had gotten her driver's license, so she was a new driver. And so she explained and talked about the conversations that she had with her little sister, but also the fear of having now the responsibility of someone else uh, in her car with her driving and how that had changed from her sitting in the passenger side with her mom driving. And so don't think that it has to be this out of the box big thing, right? But it's you and it's important to you. So. Uh, third person, first person, um, that's not what I'm looking for. When I'm reading an essay, I'm looking in and saying, oh my gosh, Catherine is like this, or Cheryl is like this, or Allie is like this. This gives me insight to how they're going to be at my school, what they're going to bring. So I would just like to add that to what Cheryl said, which is outstanding. Thank you guys so much. So we're going to move on to our final question, question, which is more of a fun one. So what are some of your personal favorite essays? I know a few of you have touched on this, but if you'd like to elaborate and uh, students and parents, I would just like to say, if you do have any questions, um, now's the time to, uh, to chat, uh, send those in a chat and we will get those answered. So just be thinking of those. So what are some of your personal favorite essays that you've read? I can start off. I will add one extra thing to what Cheryl and Beverly said. I would just say whatever voice you use, it does not matter to me. Um, just be consistent. Don't switch back and forth between first and third person because that's confusing and I've had that happen before. Um, so just be consistent with whichever one you pick. But I have two favorite essays. And so my first one was a student who wanted to study history. And so they were talking about how they really enjoyed history and they learned it from a young, or they'd been really interested in it from a young age, and um, which if they had stopped there, then that would have been very boring. But the student showed an example and it has stuck with me for years. And so their example was that their family went to, I can't remember if it was Disneyland or Disney World. One of them, they were road tripping and so they played a family road trip game and they decided whoever won the game got to decide where they went first when they got to Disney. And so the student writing the essay won the game. And so family got there, they said, okay, we're at Disney. Where do you wanna go? And the student said, I wanna go to the Hall of Presidents. And that's where they went first. And that was just a great example 
that stuck with me of how the students really did love history and loved it from a young age because me as a 30 year old if i went to disney i would not choose the hall of presidents i'm telling y'all it would definitely be some sort of ride and, and so it was just a great example again showing me more of the student's passion for history and then another one that i read actually this past year was a girl wrote a letter to her future roommate and through that she told me a lot about who she was she was like you know first thing i have to have my coffee in the morning like i'm not a morning person so don't be offended if i like don't talk to you right away i just like need that first and she went on to talk to her roommate about herself and all these different things but it told me a lot about herself and it was just really interesting so those are two of my favorites I'll jump in and go. One probably, and I, I won't say favorite, but one memorable essay was that the student started her essay in Spanish. And I don't speak Spanish, but she had picked um, a scripture, actually, the Lord's, the Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And so I could pick up on some of the words. And she started her essay with that. And then at, after she wrote that in Spanish, she began to talk about her dad, who was a janitor, and how he had impacted her life being her shepherd. And that, I, that essay was probably 22 years ago. And I have had very few students who have impacted me where it was a memorable essay of how she talked about how important education was to her family and how her dad working at night in a school, cleaning the cleaning uh, schools, how he had inspired her to want to continue her education, knowing that he had spent time uh, pushing a broom and being her shepherd. So that is one essay that has just thoroughly impacted me. She was bold, putting it in another language, assuming that we may or may not could understand it, but then she was able to explain it and that that stuck with me because i remembered that student my favorite essay was my first year in admissions so seven years ago pat clark and she wrote this essay telling she was driving her sister for their last first day of school and all the emotions it was kind of bringing back and she looked over and her sister was on her cell phone and cat kind of yelled at her of, of how could you be doing this this is so emotional like this is such a big deal and think of all the trips we've gone on and then she took us through the trips they've gone on very important family trips and experiences with it and and then it circled back to the sunday family dinners with the younger sister yelling at cat for being on her phone at the family dinner and i, I still get chills i'm like just perfect just well played something we can all relate to right we're all on our phones all the time and, and trying to remove that to, to experience people, right? Especially now in this virtual world. So I love that essay. And it's fun. Kat's gone off to do amazing things, studied in Paris. And now she's working in New York City. She's like, you know, I've done other things in my life, right? I'm like, yes, but I love this story. It was just so well done. And you can tell she took the time to write it. This is not kind of the point that my colleagues are making too. This is not one of those history papers you can wake up Sunday morning and say, oh, that's due tomorrow. No, now's the time to start thinking about it. And, and one of the things, and I think Cheryl, you mentioned this too, right? Start crafting it. Don't worry about the 650 word limit right now. Just start writing and, and don't worry about the ending or conclusion now. Just start writing and, and you'll get there. I have two um, quicker examples. Um, just give you an example. Um, I love the starting the essay in a different language. And I, those are some of my favorites. I've seen those a handful of times. There's just one line or one quote um, in a different language, which I think is very interesting. Um, but a great start to an essay, um, it kind of brings you in because you really don't know what it's going to be about. Um, so I'll tell you this and then I'll give you a second to think about it and then maybe I'll circle back and tell you what the person was really start is writing about. Um, this was one of my favorites. Um, the first line is my first jump happened at the beginning of the summer my first jump so that could be a lot of things so i'll give you a minute to just think about that while i tell you real quickly um, about another interesting essay that i read 
Um, it was for, it was a supplemental essay for Honors College and it was from a family, it was from uh, the middle, middle daughter of a family that I knew who actually was applying to Purdue. And she really um, revealed something that was so vulnerable. Um, I think that Beverly touched on it and Allie did, just making yourself, just showing us really who you are, just peel back the layers. And it's okay to be vulnerable because we're trying to understand and, and figure out who you are and how you can fit. So this story and the essay was about this girl and how she really fit in the family and how, how everybody perceived her as a middle child or where she fit in the family and how her younger and older sister were really outgoing, but how she made her place and what she really wanted to do and how she kind of connected in the family. It was just the most interesting essay. So I'm gonna circle back to um, that start. Um, maybe you've thought through it and you have some guesses for what that might be about. It could be a lot of things, just the first jump of the summer. The second line was, I've seen so many jumps in the past. Uh, but I never thought it had happened to me. So now I'm like, oh my gosh, something bad happened, right? Um, my jump happened in the most common place, the deep end. So the student writing this had been a lifeguard, but talked about the lessons they learned in being a lifeguard. So it's really not, it's about their summer job. Um, that the leadership and the experiences um, and the maturity you gain from having a job, regardless of what kind of job it is. Hopefully you're not torturing seventh graders. Hopefully maybe you're tutoring those seventh graders. Um, just that's one of the things that I think is most commonly left out of an application um, because students kind of don't give themselves enough credit for those. So this particular student talked about um, all the lessons they had learned from being a lifeguard and it was beyond their, you know, of course the life-saving skills that they had learned. So those are my examples. Awesome, thank you guys so much. Those are all great examples. Um, okay, we do have one question um, so far. Let me look at it really quick. Um, I'm gonna put the link in the chat to um, our website. We do have um, a few more events throughout this week. We do have an event tonight called University Spotlights where you can hear from um, anywhere between 20 to 30 universities uh, kind of give an explanation of their school. And we also have two more panels tomorrow, um, engineering, as um, a, a second university spotlight event tomorrow night. So I will include the link to sign up um, for those in the chat. And it, again, if you do have any specific questions, uh, please send those to me. So um, let's see, let me read this question really quick. Okay, so this is a great question. Uh, so uh, this, um, the participant kind of mentioned that they had another student who wrote an essay um, about um, the student's lifelong interest in design. And so um, the participant is wondering um, for some other students or for their other children, um, if you're applying to a super competitive program, how important it, is it that the student's essay relates to their chosen field of study? I'll take this one. Um, I think that if you have something important to show us about your field of study, then that's a great thing to write your essay about. Um, if there's something different, you want to show us another side of you, or there's another story you need to tell us, then it's fine not to write about that particular area of interest or your major. Um, a lot of times, well, I won't say a lot of times, sometimes students have a great internship or um, you know the relative who was a pharmacist who they always heard the stories about and that driven their passion those are really cool essays and those are really very telling about you but don't force it don't try and make the essay fit about why you're so passionate um, I can speak for Purdue and I'm guessing some of my other colleagues have questions, well, if you're applying to a, um, a major, a program where, or a university where you have to apply directly to a major, or you're applying directly to an academic college, there may be a why this major or why your academic um, question already. So if there's already that question somewhere else, don't feel, 
you know, that's where you can kind of put that experience or passion. I think it's, and I'm going to jump in uh, based on what Cheryl said, which, which I totally agree with. I think it's important to realize that the essay is the only really truly piece of the puzzle that the student owns at that point. The grades are set, recommendations are coming in, if schools are requiring tests, tests are done. The only component in this process that is truly clearly owned by the student is that essay. And if you have an opportunity to add to that component, like Cheryl was saying, it's not necessary to talk about your major in your essay. And I always tell students, give me something that I can't find um, in your grades. I can't find, we're going to know what your major is because it's listed there, but give us something that no one else knows about that we can't find on the internet, that a, a recommendation won't give us. Because to me, it's like building a home and the essay is the color of the walls and it gives it flavor and it brings depth to it and brings perception to it. So I would, uh, depending on the instruction, and I was gonna add this tip, follow the instructions when writing essays, first of all, uh, the parameters. For example, if the question is, tell me someone who's impacted your life and why, don't spend the whole essay writing about the person because we're wanting the why. Um, Brad talked about when you start off writing the essay, don't focus so much on the number of, word, of words. You can always cut down, but we want within that is the whole wall painted. We want the curtains up, we want the pictures on the wall, right? Um, and so give us, and the essay to me is that, it's the flavor, it's the color, it's the dynamic, um, perception of, of who we want to see. It's the portrait. And, and so I would say, not that majors aren't important, but as Cheryl said, if you can add to that based on an experience, that's fine. But, and I think all of us have read essays that were forced because they were trying to impress us. Don't, don't impress, but just show your passion. Thank you both for that uh, wonderful answer. Um, so our, our final question um, is more about length. Uh, so how long do you suggest a college essay be? Is there a specific number of paragraphs, number of words or pages? Um, uh, do you have any advice uh, for this student? Long enough to tell your story. I'll, I'll agree with that, Cheryl. But some institutions, if they say 500 words, make sure it's within 500 words. If there's not a limit, I don't want a book. I don't need a book. I don't have time to read a book. Um, but I want your complete story. So uh, don't feel forced to, I've had students do, it's a number count, and they've gotten right up to uh, 499 words, but the story wasn't complete. <laughs> So make sure the story is complete, but do follow the word limit if universities have that. Great point. I've also had it the other way, right? Where it was 700 words and it cut off at 650. Like, where's the ending? There, there's no, we didn't finish it. But I, I would also say to that point too, don't worry about the word count, especially now when you start writing your essay. It, sometimes like uh, Beverly was talking about kind of that common essay, the, the, the basic one, the story starts in paragraph three. Right, that's when we're learning about you at the lake house with your grandparents. The other stuff we didn't really need. What we need to be see you on the dock with the fishing pole. That's one I read. Right, that I really like. So I, I'm we're right there. Um, yeah, but I, I I also I have yet to see one that was complete at one paragraph. Right, the shortest one I ever read. The record's five sentences, and that that we asked the student for another writing sample because that just wasn't wasn't it. The other time we asked for another writing sample was when the students shared their uh, history paper, World, World War II history. It was a great history paper. I learned a lot about World War II, nothing about the student, right? So um, make sure you take the time to write your story. I'd like to share one other tip based on what Brad just said. Um, I read a really strange essay once and it was analyzing someone else's article. Not 
the best topic. It didn't tell me anything about the student at all. I'm not really sure if they didn't read what the essay was supposed to be, but I, I totally missed the mark on that. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much uh, just for, um, for listening attentively. Um, I just can't tell you how much I admire and respect all of these panelists. Um, they have included their contact information in the chat. I know each of them would be happy to follow up with any of you if you do have additional questions on this topic or their individual schools. Um, again, we thank you so much for your time. Um, I know for me, I learned a lot from, from these panelists and I hope you did as well. Um, again, if you do, if you are interested in any of our follow-up events um, throughout this week, please let us know and hope you enjoy um, the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Catherine. Bye, y'all. Good luck on your essays. Yeah.